Hey guys, welcome to a new video. So today we're going to continue working on the scooter. And last time we left off with having some LEDs running from the internal battery. So the wiring we did in that video and uh, connecting the XD30 connectors and stuff like that, the DC DC converter, that's all working. Now I worked ahead a little bit because I've been working on the cables to, well, the first part of the LED strip. And then I've also soldered on the second part now and we'll continue on. But I've been having all kinds of trouble. I had two of these 144 LED uh, per meter strips, WS2812B with the IP65 epoxy coating on there. And well, I think I blew one up while testing some DC DC converter. So that's all gone. So I only had 144 left. So I cut my piece for on this side. And then we have the piece for on the other side, like that. And with these LED strip, you have to make really sure that the arrows are all pointing in the right direction. And, well, I need this little piece because on the end of this piece, I'm going to attach two data wires to basically split the signal from here to the two parallel rows that run down the side. So, um, because this is IP65 LED strip, soldering is a bit harder because, well, you have to peel away the epoxy first. And what I do, I stick it down with a little bit of tape and then I flip it back and then I put some heat shrink on it. I already have it on the cables here. And I basically overlap one of the LEDs. So that goes dark, but I want to have a, a pretty good seal. I'm not going to use it outside a lot, but if I can get it somewhat water or rain tight, that would be preferable. And well, this first part is already working. I think I can switch it on. Yep. Yeah. There we go. So I'm going to attach another data wire to this guy, and then I have to attach it to the other LED strips, but I have to figure out how long the cables should be to there and from the other strip. And then I have to figure out how to actually stick this stuff down. Now I have some extra one centimeter wide uh, sticky tape that's supposed to fit on, well, on the, on the back. And this is supposed to be like super ultra strong but I guess we're going to see. And then I also still have to figure out how to make this watertight. I have an idea for that. It's not pretty, but eh, it might work. But uh, yeah, wait, hold on. Interrupting this video real quick. This video and or project is partially sponsored by PCBWay. If you've ever looked into doing one of my DIY projects, well, you're going to need PCBs. And PCBWay can make those for you very quickly and deliver them right to your doorstep. I often use them because they offer consistent quality while still being cheap. And they also have very versatile shipping options where you can combine multiple orders if you want to, or use e-packet shipping, saving on shipping time, but also costs. Another unique feature is that once you place your order, you get a representative assigned to your order. And if you have any questions during the process, they can help you out. Yeah, is this PCB way? Yeah, I just ordered some of those Queen LED boards. Is everything correct? Will this will this work? Yeah, yeah, PCB way here. Don't worry about it. We've made hundreds of those boards and they all work great. Ah, okay, great. I hope to get my order soon. Thanks. But honestly, for actually for real, if you need any PCBs for one of my projects, such as the Queen LED boards, or for your own project, Go check them out. I'll have a link down in the description. And if you register with that link, you will get a few dollars off your first order. And it will also let them know I sent you. Currently, they're celebrating their sixth year anniversary and they have special coupon codes to get even more discount. Cool. Okay, back to the video. So first, let me attach another data wire to the other wires I just sold it there. 
then put the heat shrink on it and then figure out how long it needs to be to the other LED strip, cut the cables and then solder it onto there. And I'll show you how I do that on that LED strip. Okay, soldering on this side is done. So basically the data wire is coming from, uh, oh, where is it, here we go, inside to this little strip here at the front. And then it gets split into two of those purple wires or slightly purple, I don't know. And one of them goes here. And this one actually is also being fed by a second cable from inside. And well, I can already see that these things aren't really sticking, so we'll look at that later. This is probably going to be one of those uh, lots of hot glue projects. But let's see if this works. And it does. Okay, that's already pretty cool. And the front piece is also working. So, I'm going to get to work on the other side. I think it's all going to work. Let's take a look, because all of the outside, well, LEDs are now, or should now be working. So, over here, I basically uh, heat shrink this all together. There's one little wire coming out, because there's plus, minus, and data going to this one from this one. And then data is split, like that, to this one here. So these two, these two like this, will be doing exactly the same. And even though they're not the same length, you can do two things. You can either set them to this length, and then the rest just won't do anything, or you can set them to the longest length, and then, well, it'll just stop here, but continue here. And as I mentioned before, I wanted to have this little tiny part, but I might do that uh, again in the future when I have more LED strip, or more of this type LED strip at least, because it became really tiny, but I wanted to use the segment feature in WLED, so I could make these white lights, for instance, and these on the sides another color. So, yeah. Um, let's see if it works. Yeah, there we go. Still running from battery. Oh, nice. Yeah, that works. Okay, I'm going to put in some more work in this video by arranging the cables and, well, putting some hot glue in certain spots because it won't hold down otherwise, <laughs> especially this front part. We'll see how that turns out. And then I'm going to end this video. And then in the next video, you'll magically see me having integrated all of this in here. Now, the reason is uh, lots of cables are still very long, way too long to fit in here. But this way I can just, uh, well, pull them back like this and that way I can make them all exactly the right length.
Okay, so I've tidied up the outside part, well, as far as it goes for a hobby project. So I kind of tried to lay out the cables neatly, and then I kind of hit them with some tape. And while well, you saw me hot gluing uh, the LED strip in place in, uh, in several places, and over here, I just really want to make sure it's not going to fall off. And on this side, I did the same, especially with the, uh, with the front strip. So I did some here, and I put some over there. And, well, you can see a smudge there, over there, and over there. And for the button, I took a really, really large heat shrink I have, and I basically encased it in the heat shrink and then screwed the protective cap on top. And that should make it reasonably watertight, I think. And on the back, I just injected the heat shrink with hot glue. And it's a good thing I'm using silicone cables. I don't know if plastic cables can uh, withstand that kind of heat. But these silicones should be fine. And well, uh, that should be pretty watertight too. It's basically plugged up with uh, hot glue. And then I, uh, well, yeah, I tie wrapped it all down. So let's see if I can turn it on with one hand. Oh, easily. And there she goes. Now, of course, the guts are still down there and hanging out. And all of this needs to be done. But that will be in the next video, as I said. So next video is basically going to be finished up insides, maybe a slight recap, and then showcase footage. So make sure to subscribe for that. Like the video, and again, write down in the comments everything I'm doing wrong or I'm doing right, some questions you might have, and uh, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.